peoples, clap your hands, cry to God with shouts of joy. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, Amen. the Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Brethren, let us acknowledge our sins and so prepare ourselves to celebrate the sacred mysteries. I confess to Almighty God and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words, in what I have done and in what I have failed to do, through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault. Therefore, I ask, Blessed Mary, ever Virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace to people of good will. We praise you, we bless you, we adore you, we glorify you. We give you thanks for your great glory. Lord God, Heavenly King, O God, Almighty Father, Lord Jesus Christ, Only Begotten Son, Lord God, Lamb of God, Son of the Father, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. You take away the sins of the world, receive our prayer. You are seated at the right hand of the Father, have mercy on us. For you alone are the Holy One, you alone are the Lord. You alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father. Amen. Let us pray. O God, who through the grace of adoption chose us to be children of light, grant, we pray, that we may not be wrapped in the darkness of error, but always be seen to stand in the bright light of truth. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the second book of Kings. One day Elisha came to Shunem, where there was a woman of influence who urged him to dine with her. Afterward, whenever he passed by, he used to stop there to dine. So she said to her husband, I know that Elisha is a holy man of God. Since he visits us often, let us arrange a little room on the roof and furnish it for him with a bed, table, chair, and lamp, so that when he comes to us, he can stay there. Sometime later, Elisha arrived and stayed in the room overnight. Later, Elisha asked, can something be done for her? His servant Gehazi answered, Yes, she has no son, and her, her husband is getting on in years. Elisha said, Call her. When the woman had been called and stood at the door, Elisha promised, This time next year you will be fondling a baby son. The word of the Lord. The responsorial psalm. Forever I will sing the goodness of the Lord. Forever I will sing the goodness of the Lord. The promises of the Lord I will sing forever. Through all generations my mouth shall pro proclaim your faithfulness. For you have said, my kindness is established forever. In heaven you have confirmed your faithfulness. Forever I will sing the goodness of the Lord. Bless the people who know the joyful shout. In the light of your countenance, O Lord, they walk. At, at your name they rejoice all the day, and through your justice they are exalted. Forever I will sing the goodness of the Lord. You are the splendor of their strength, and by your favor our horn is exalted. For to the Lord belongs our shield, and to the Holy One of Israel, our King. Forever I will sing the goodness of the Lord. A reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Romans. 
Brothers and sisters, are you unaware that we who were baptized into Christ Jesus were baptized into his death? We were indeed buried with him through baptism into death, so that just as Christ was raised from the dead by the glory of the Father, we too might live in newness of life. If then we have died with Christ, we believe that we shall also live with him. We know that Christ, raised from the dead, dies no more. Death no longer has power over him. As to his death, he died to sin once and for all. As to his life, he lives for God. Consequently, you too must think of yourselves as dead to sin and living for God in Christ Jesus. The word of the Lord. Alleluia, alleluia. You are a chosen race, a royal priesthood, a holy nation. Announce the praises of him who called you out of darkness into his wonderful light. Alleluia, alleluia. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. Jesus said to his apostles, Whoever loves father or mother more than me is not worthy of me. And whoever loves son or daughter more than me is not worthy of me. And whoever does not take up his cross and follow after me is not worthy of me. Whoever finds his life will lose it, and whoever loses his life for my sake will find it. Whoever receives you receives me, and whoever receives me receives the one who sent me. Whoever receives a prophet because he is a prophet will receive a prophet's reward. And whoever receives a righteous man, because he is a righteous man, will receive a righteous man's reward. And whoever gives only a cup of cold water to one of these little ones to drink, because the little one is a disciple of mine, amen, I say to you, he will surely not lose his reward. The Gospel of the Lord. It must have been a very strange thing for the people who were in the crowd when our Lord was speaking to hear that they must pick up their cross and follow our Lord. Because, of course, at that point, our Lord himself had not been crucified. And for the Israelites, the idea of the cross and crucifixion was very foreign. It was the Roman invaders who did that. It was considered to be the most humiliating, awful punishment that one could receive for a crime. So when our Lord says, you have to pick up your cross, they were probably shocked. They thought, what does this have to do with us, with the Messiah? The Messiah is supposed to overthrow the Romans. And yet our Lord is saying, pick up your cross. So what does it mean then to pick up our cross? We know most of us, all of us really, do not have the opportunity to be crucified like our Lord was. No one does that anymore. But we are called to pay attention to our lives and to see where our Lord is working in them and to walk with him in all that we do. And there are sort of three categories, three places where we can pick up our cross and follow our Lord. The first of these is simply by looking at our vocations and at 
the things that we are called to do at every moment of our lives, in our job, in our work, in our family, in our home. If we think about it, we heard in the second reading how we are called to be adopted, well, we, in the opening prayer, we were called to be adopted sons of our Heavenly Father. And in the second reading, how we die to sin and rise again with Christ. So if we have the life of Christ in us, and we look at the life of Christ, he spent 30 years of his life not preaching, not going out and healing people, not dying on the cross, but at his house, doing his chores, going out and helping our, our lady make bread, helping St. Joseph in his shop, doing those day-to-day -day things that we all have to do to support ourselves, to support our family, to seek to do those things with the remembrance that God is there with us, that we are participating in the life of Christ in all of those things. To remember before every task that we do that we are in the presence of God and to ask God to do those things with love, to do them with awareness of his presence to us. That is the main way in our lives that we are called to holiness, that we are called to be united to our blessed Lord in those things that we have to do every day, getting up in the morning, making a cup of coffee, taking out the garbage, going to work, doing those tasks that we have during our work. We see what is asked of me, what is expected of me at this moment, and I'm going to focus on that. I'm going to do it with love. I'm going to do it with the recognition that I need to do these things for my life and willingly to pick up my cross and to do those things with an awareness of the presence of God and the help of his grace in doing those things well. That is the main way that we grow in holiness in our lives. Now the second category, the second way that we are called to bear our cross is those things that we don't really have control over. Those unexpected things like last night, the air conditioning wasn't really working in this church. You know, we can't do anything about that. We're going to sweat. So if we're going to sweat, we may as well say, okay, well, this is a burden I have to bear. This is something I have to deal with now. Unexpected medical issues, uh, car trouble, someone in our family having a problem, maybe not following the faith in the way that we like. We can't force people to change. We can't force change in, change in situations, but we have a choice. We can either say, okay, somehow God is going to bring this to a better conclusion. Somehow I am going to learn something from this, knowing that all the while God is there with me, walking with me, bearing my cross with me, helping me to follow him. Now, that doesn't mean, of course, that if something like that happens, we aren't supposed to do anything. We're just supposed to sit back and take it. Obviously, you know, we have to change a car tire. We have to see a doctor. We have to do those things that are within our power. But a Christian doesn't just complain bitterly about all the circumstances of his or her life. But he looks and sees, what can I do to see God in this situation? And am I going to trust that God is going to lead me through this and he is going to bring about a greater good because of this. Now, the third way of bearing our cross is, I think, the most difficult one, and that is overcoming the sin in our lives. We human beings are creatures of habit. When we do good things, we get used to doing good things and they are easy for us, they're joyful for us, but if we fall into sin, those sins can also create habits in our lives. And we know if we've ever tried to break a habit, how difficult that can be. And it can seem almost overwhelming for us to try to overcome those things in our life. Impatience, gossip, lies, all of those things that we might struggle with in our day-to-day -day lives. It can be very difficult to break those habits. But God gives us the grace, first of all, through the sacrament of confession, which unites us to Christ's cross specifically in overcoming our habits. But in our life of prayer, if we ask our Lord to enlighten our hearts, to show us those places in our lives where we do need to cooperate with his grace to overcome those things, then he will guide us. We make good resolutions. You know, look at one situation, one thing. I know I'm going to interact with this person tomorrow. I know I'm going to be impatient in that interaction. So I'm going to say a prayer 
before I interact with that person to ask me to recognize the presence of God in them, to help me to love them. I know that when I go to this group of people, I tend to gossip. So I'm going to pray to keep my mouth shut and to pray for the people about whom they're talking instead of contributing to it. And maybe by my good example, God will use me as an instrument to help them as well. So these are the ways that we are called to bear our cross. Those things that we have to do in our lives, those things that we have control over, those unexpected things that we don't have control over to depend on God to get us through them and to allow God to help us by his grace to break those habits of sin and vice in our lives so that we, by his help, not by our own power, but by his help, are able to follow the commandments, to live according to the Beatitudes, ultimately to love God above all things and to love our neighbor as ourselves for the love of him. I believe in one God, the Father, maker of heaven and of earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten not made, consubstantial with the Father, through him all things were made. For us men and for our salvation, he came down from heaven. And by the Holy Spirit was incarnate to the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried, and rose again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy, Catholic, and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Let us pray. We pray for the church that in always putting Christ first, we may imitate God's generosity in our hospitality to others. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. This month with Pope Francis, we pray that Catholics may place the celebration of the Eucharist at the heart of their lives, transforming human relationships in a very deep way and opening their hearts to encounter with God, to encounter with God and all their brothers and sisters. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. To our, for our nation, as we celebrate its 247th birthday, and for the safety of all who travel this long holiday weekend, that God will protect us and guide us in living the values which we proclaim. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For peace and justice in the world, and a conversion of those whose hearts are hardened against the needs of others. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For those who have died, may they enjoy the rewards of eternal life, especially those who died in service to this nation. And for Dr. Pete Stagg, whose funeral we celebrated on Saturday. And for Mary Ingenthron, whose funeral will be on Monday, July 10th. For, and, for, and for the deceased members of our collaborative for whom we pray intentionally at this Mass. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. God of justice, Father of truth, who guide creation in wisdom and goodness to fulfillment in Christ your Son, open our hearts to the truth of his gospel, that your peace may rule in our hearts and your justice guide our lives through the same Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen.
Pray, brethren, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice of our hands. Praise the Lord God in his name, for our good and good will in his O God, who graciously accomplished the effects of your mysteries, grant, we pray, that the deeds by which we serve you may be worthy of these sacred gifts through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. With your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We have lifted them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere, to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God. For you laid the foundations of the world and have arranged the changing of times and seasons. You formed man in your own image and set humanity over the whole world in all its wonder to rule in your name over all you have made and forever praise you in your mighty works through Christ our Lord. Amen. And so with all the angels we praise you as in joyful celebration we acclaim. Holy, 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 Lord God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, and all you have created rightly gives you praise. For through your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, by the power and working of the Holy Spirit, you give life to all things and make them holy, and you never cease to gather a people to yourself, so that from the rising of the sun to its setting, a pure sacrifice may be offered to your name. Therefore, O Lord, we humbly implore you, by the same Spirit, graciously make holy these gifts we have brought to you for consecration that they may become the body and blood of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, at whose command we celebrate these mysteries. For on the night he was betrayed, he himself took bread, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many, for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. Save us, Savior of your world, for by your by cross, cross and resurrection. You us. Therefore, O oh Lord, as we celebrate the memorial of the saving passion of your Son, his wondrous resurrection and ascension into heaven, and as we look forward to his second coming, we offer you in thanksgiving this holy and living sacrifice. Look, we pray, upon the oblation of your church and recognizing the sacrificial victim by whose death you will to reconcile us to yourself, grant that we who are nourished by the body and blood of your Son and filled with his Holy Spirit may become one body, one spirit in Christ. May he make of us an eternal offering to you so that we may obtain an inheritance with your elect, especially with the most blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with blessed Joseph, her spouse, with your blessed apostles and glorious martyrs, and with all the saints on whose constant intercession in your presence we rely for unfailing help. May this sacrifice of our reconciliation, we pray, O Lord, advance the peace and salvation of all the world. Be pleased to confirm in faith and charity your pilgrim church on earth with your servant, Francis our Pope and Sean our Bishop, the order of bishops, all the clergy, and the entire people you have gained for your own. Listen graciously to the prayers of this family whom you have summoned before you. In your compassion, O merciful Father, Gather to yourself all your children scattered throughout the world. To our departed brothers and sisters and to all who are pleasing to you at their passing from this life, give kind admittance to your kingdom. 
There we hope to enjoy forever the fullness of your glory through Christ our Lord, through whom you bestow on the world all that is good. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. At the Savior's command, informed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, O Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. Peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. Let us offer one another the sign of peace. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, grant us peace. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those who are called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, Lord I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only, but only say, say the word and my soul shall be
Bless the Lord, O my soul, and all within me, his holy name. Let us pray. May this divine sacrifice we have offered and received fill us with life, O Lord, we pray, so that bound to you in lasting charity, we may bear fruit that lasts forever through Christ our Lord. Amen. Uh, we will have a little reception downstairs afterward, I believe. Uh, so everyone's welcome to come. There's at least coffee and donuts. Those are the two things I was told would be there. So you're welcome to come downstairs. Thank you all. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. May Almighty God bless you, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go in peace.